गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास जस्ट मिनट ओके गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी आर वी आर डन सम इंट्रोडक्टरी कोर्स अबाउट टी ओ सी आई थिंक वी आर डिस्कट डिस्कस समथिंग अबाउट लैंग्वेज मॉडल्स ग्रामर स्ट्रिंग्स एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा बट इवन आई थिंक we need to discuss more for some some more few minutes about the introductory course introductory things you can have problem with my clarity of voice because i am having some sort of cold so please consider it because i can't hold more than two days three days okay <coughs> yeah yes no okay so now coming to point we will discuss this introduction about more uh, More or less half an hour or forty-five minutes. After that, I will give you the questions uh, about twenty-five uh, to thirty questions to construct the finite automata. After that, there are some operations of finite automata. That means calculating the minimum finite automata, merging of two, uh, merging the two finite machines, and uh, construction of automata as well, and the language accepted by the finite automata. And drawing the finite automata for the given languages. Okay, so coming to introduction again, there are some more points. Please note it down. The math and alphabets. We will discuss each and every point for one and two minutes because they are not so important, but even they are need to be discussed. So, okay. Yes. <coughs> While noting down, you just. Start in your mind calculating. Start in your mind that so what this uh, term meant for, like alphabets are like. This is this stands for sigma. That means here we write input symbol. That means in our last example, this was mean zero and one. That means my string consists of these alphabets. This characters actually. So till now, what I was calling as character from now. From now onwards, I will call it as alphabets. Okay. Yes. Uh, now strings. Uh, okay. Let it be here. The string. The string may be any uh, sequence of these input symbols. Zero zero one one zero zero. Either one. Either null. Okay. We will discuss this. This is one of the most important prospecting uh, aspect in uh, TOC. Zero one. string of any character okay this called a string now comes the concept of substring substring you all know i guess no need to discuss but even it keeps some importance in poc 10010 this is my main string let it, i will call it as s then 100 will be substring of length 3 this is my substring double s okay similarly 01 is also my substring of this string s One zero is also substring because all can be formed from the same one double zero. This is one double zero. This is one zero. This is zero one. Single zero is also a substring. Single one is also a substring. Okay. Now these three points are clear. Okay. Now we will come to the point length of the strings. Here, if I will write here as length as L. Okay. If I will denote length as L. Then mod of l will be uh, what will be mod of length here? L equals to three again three again one again zero again two. Okay, the string of length zero will be called as null string, and this is the string which is accepted by each and every finite automata. No, not each and every finite automata. If only the initial state is finite state, right? Uh, if this is to the initial state, then we can say that it doesn't accept the uh, empty language. But if my initial state is only the final state, then definitely uh, it is going to accept the null language. Fine. Okay. This is my Q naught, and null means the state is not moving anywhere. So the state is my Q zero and Q zero only. Okay. That means there is no any processing state. Fine. Okay. <coughs> yes. Okay. Mm, what we so what we can derive from this L, the length of the string may be zero or greater than zero. Okay. So we can write here as L greater than zero, so this point, this type of points are important. They can give uh, give this type. They can ask this type of points in true and false statements. Like 
uh, these are the following statements and true and uh, one of the statements may be like uh, if l is the length of any string which is accepted by any automata then mod of l should be greater than or equal to zero so you must be knowing that okay and what is entry string same null string empty string both are same the empty string is the string with the with length having uh, with length equals to zero okay okay so what you can say uh, more things to be derived okay suppose this is my string okay i, I should rub it out here Okay, I will rub it. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Okay, I am sorry from my side. Okay, I hope you you better revise in these times. Okay, you can say five minutes are you are getting even five minutes, then definitely you should revise in these five minutes also. Because in the last two months, five minutes, two minutes doesn't matter. Each and every moment is important for you, so you should be keep revising all the points. Okay. Okay, <coughs> so this is my string. S okay. Now, uh, whether this is the substring of S, okay, I will write it one by one. Then we will discuss S two zero zero, S three one zero zero one zero. Okay. Okay. If there is any problem, then you can mail me. Regarding the writing, regarding the voice quality, so that I can improve it in my other lectures. Okay, this is my this is my main stream. These three are the substring of this. Whether these are not, we are going to uh, discuss here. So this is definitely the substring from this from this concept. Uh, what we discussed here. Okay, no problem there. Okay. Now whether these and these are the substrings of this or not. Is the point of the, okay? Yes. This is going to be definitely the substring of this. Okay, because this and this is both are same. So this is also the substring of this. Okay. So I remember two points. Substrings are two types. One is trivial. Trivial, as the name suggests, the thing that is definitely obvious. That means that the things which are not to be derived, okay, are called as trivial things. So these two. Each and every string has two trivial substrings, which are null string and the string itself. I will write it as it, as it, as it. Okay. Yes. So which one is here non-trivial? Yes, definitely S two is non-trivial. In our case, okay. S one and S three both are trivial substrings of this string. Yes. Okay. This is one more concept you need to do. Okay. Yes. One more thing. Okay, let me rub it down here. I hope you are noting down simultaneously while I am writing each and every time. Okay. So there is no point of confusion here. Uh, you can revert it back and look look at the look at all the subject lectures, whatever whatever rank you want. Yes. If this is my string, okay. What can be my input characters? Uh, input alphabets here, A to Z. Okay. From here, I am uh, framing an string. Let it be gate. Yes. So now, mm, if U is the substring of W, the length of U is always less than equal to length of W. Is it true? Less than or less than equal to? Obviously, less than equal to, right? Because W is itself a substring of W. So, uh, how many substrings are possible of it? U. 
so uh, u is e or it can be g okay only a only t only e okay what is the similarity between these all the four substring their length is one similarly with length two substrings are possible with a t a t e so from here one thing is clear you can't disturb the uh, arrangement means e t can't be substring of this string because here t e arrives but e t is not there okay so t e a t g a that means the uh, sequence should be same always okay now n equal to 3 similarly g a t a t e this these small things may might bore you but still they are very very important remember that in gate they are not going to frame the hard questions but very minute questions with a small modification so you must be clear with each and every small point so that's why i'm discussing these small points don't think that if you know this then this is the less point to concentrate no let me read it <coughs> okay so from number of services possible are four three two one so what's this this we can write it as sigma four plus one string with length zero okay this one what is this the length of the given string four so what you come up with formula if the length of the string is l then number of substrings possible are sigma l plus one okay so this can be one more point they are going to ask if uh, you want to know this then you will be kept here if they are giving the string with uh, length 100 then you can't derive at that time all the substrings possible with length 100 obviously yes so for length 100 what will be the formula if they are giving what can be the formula 100 into 100 plus 1 that means sigma 100 by 2 plus 1 50 101 into 50 okay what will be the formula 101 plus 1 okay 0505 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. okay this is the answer they're not going to they're not going to give you this uh, single digit length they're going to give you three digit four digit length okay so you better note this formula in your note okay yes <coughs> okay what are the more point to discuss yes ah better i should love it okay okay i write the i will write the formula once again here i have a bit down okay 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 this is the this one my formula i will keep this formula in bracket okay okay what are the prefix prefix and suffix if oh no need to write this it is written here so but i will put it as okay so what can be the prefix are this prefix yes of course because we are Heading from the front to end, so these are our prefix. Prefix means pre. We are going to move from the front end of the string to the last end of the string. Okay, so G is prefix. Prefix of length one, prefix of length two, prefix of length three. Oh, sorry. There, uh, yes, this is also prefix. Okay. Mm, okay. Now comes the concept of power of alphabet. If my input symbol for any string is 0 and 1, then power of alphabet is defined by sigma to power k, which means all the possible strings of length k. Okay. Length k strings. Okay. Now sigma is 0, 1. Sigma 1 will comprise of only two strings, which is 0 and 1. Similarly, sigma 3 I should write what will comprise 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and whatever. Okay, these are called as power of alphabets. Okay, now from here we are proceeding to the yes. Now, in the next 10 minutes, we are done with all our concepts. Okay. The goal is very small, that's why I have to rub it down on each and every point. But we can consider these ideas because concepts are more important than all these supported things. Yes, okay. Similarly, if sigma k means length of strings k, 
sorry, string of length k. I'm sorry. From here, the concept is starts. Till now, we are we are going through the basics. Oh, sorry. And now the main concept is coming in the picture. This is called as clean closure. Better I would write here. Clean closure. Positive closure. Okay. In systematic way, we can define clean closure as what we can write. Yes. Clean closure is sigma to power zero, that means sigma to power one, union sigma to power two, union sigma to power three, union, possible, 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 whatever. That means sigma star means all the possible strings of the given input alphabet. Okay. All the possible strings. Whatever you can design, whatever you can define. Okay. This this is good. this is called as uh, this is called as sigma star. Okay. Sigma plus means positive closure. In positive closure, what is the difference from the above one? No, sorry. This way. Plus sigma one, union sigma two, union sigma three, union delta zero. That means only the null string is not present in sigma plus. Okay. So the only point of difference is sigma star is equal to sigma plus union null that means null string in better words i should call it as null string because it is always point of confusion okay yes okay this you can note it down in your note one important concepts okay when we are done all with hmm. Mm, yes, okay. Now, all the introduction is over. If you have any doubts, you can read it to my board. The, one of the any given email IDs, I have discussed my email IDs with yeah, in lecture one. So you can see it from there. Okay, because now at this point of time, you must clear all with your basic because we are going to start one. Uh, finite automata the topic okay yes okay finite automata now finite automata is a device that accept the things or mathematical representation of regular language okay it accept the mathematical representation of regular language okay now finite automata can be defined with five tuples which are capital q q dot f del and one more with qf this is set of all states because with getting one input we are changing our state so this is the set of all state q not always represents the initial state it is set of all final state remember whenever we are going to state it may be final or it may be non-final it is our transition function. It is one of the most important part of all the uh, finite automata. They can ask questions from this. This is the representation of final state. So better I would frame here an example by giving an automata. This is the representation of initial state. Q not is not Q not is always initial state, but this have written initial state. I must say. Okay. Q one. Q2, my input symbols are 0 and 1, okay, in 0, it is going to Q1, 
in one it is going to be here from here 0 and 1 it remains here from 0 oh 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 I am sorry I'm sorry it will make it as an effect but we are only using say the so we are not going to do this <coughs> sorry so from q2 one transition comes from here zero and one again goes from here q2 to q1 uh, sorry q2 to q0 it is as one okay so see there are some few points of observation from this final automata for each and every alphabet there is only one transition from each and every state from q1 there is only one transition to zero and one transition from one as well from Q2 also there is only one transition for all input alphabets. Okay. So I will name it as transitions. Okay. Yes. Now the second point to observe would be like there are no final states. Okay. My QF here is okay. Randomly we will make it uh, any final state. Let it be Q1. Okay. It will come from the my transition function. QF is only my Q1. Okay. My set of all states are Q dot Q1 and Q2. Okay. Yes. And if you have any points of observation, you can see. Um, yes. More important point is to be here. This transition function, what does it mean? Okay, transition function how the state are going to change. You are in some state, cross an input symbol, give rise to any new states. So it comprises of my transition symbol. So from one state, there are possible only two moves because this is a uh, DFA. So only two moves are possible here. Okay. In this case, because number of alphabets here are two, and state is one. Okay, so if Q is Q one, cross my sigma is zero and one. Okay, uh, better I should write it down because it doesn't make sense. Okay. Okay, so I am adding some bookish language. Transition function will look like this. If you state is Q naught, oh sorry, no need to this. If the state is Q naught, input symbol is one. It will move to Q naught one. It will go to Q two. Similarly, Q naught zero. It will go to Q one. Q one zero or one. It will be always in Q one. This is a mathematical representation. But while solving the examples, you need not to do these things. But for from the theoretical point of aspect, these are some some cases in these are these are important. Better you should know this. If you are not here, if you are using or not using, it doesn't make sense. But you should know all these things. Okay. <coughs> okay. There are some important points regarding this final parameter, which you should note it down. I am reading out this for you. Number of initial states in each and every finite automata is always one. Okay, sir. Yes. DFA can be constructed without or with final state that the number of final states zero or one or greater than one. Okay. Here you can see. I can also make this as a final state. There are no restrictions for final state, but there must be an initial state. If because if there is no initial state, then there is no point of confusion. There is no initial state. If a string comes 0, 1, 0, then from where you are going to insert it. So there is a need of at least one initial, not at least, only one initial state. Okay. But there may be more than final, more than one final state, 0, or only one final state. Yes. Okay. So, representation of FA. This is a very uh, Widely used representation. Uh, not I should be uh, widely used. Hmm. 
this is transition diagram second representation will be transition table okay yeah right transition table means here will be states q q not q1 q2 okay i will put it up for you these are not important so we are not going to discuss much but okay these are my input symbols this is my next state it is similar to digital logic there is no logic of okay. these are my symbols here zero and one okay you can write it as like uh, better there is one more uh, efficient way this is the most popular in the book use this is my transition function this is zero this is one these are my states q0 to 0 goes q1 q2 q1 q2 these both are q1 q1 these are q0 q0 this is q1 this is transition table this is transition diagram both are used for logic solution of fa for minimization this is important to check the acceptance this is this one is also important okay yes okay <coughs> right. Uh, please note down important points. Note down the important points. I have repeated thousand of times. <laughs> I may bore you, but still, these are uh, these are very important. Okay. So there are some more important points are still left. So okay, finite automata always accepts only the regular language. Every finite language is accepted by the finite automata, and hence every finite language is regular. So points are uh, finite. Each and every finite language is regular, okay. But at the same time, not each and every. Uh, oh, okay, okay, no, no. Yes. If the language is finite, then definitely it is regular. But if the language is infinite, then it may or may not be regular. This is the second point. Uh, third point is every empty language is expected, expected uh, accepted by the finite automata. Q naught, Q one, zero one, zero one. And there is no final state. Even then, the file okay, the empty language is accepted by this automata. So each and every empty language is a regular language. Okay. Yes, one more important point. We left it out. It is every finite automata represents only one language. Okay. But a language can be accepted by more than one finite automata. For each and every language, there may be different finite automata, but the minimum finite automata will be always unique. That means there is always only, only unique finite automata. Only minimized finite automata is always unique for each and every language. But there are more than there can be more than possible one more than one finite automata. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now we are done with our all the examples. There is no need to revise each and everything. It means I will not give my time to revise each and everything. Definitely some important points we will be revising. You can revise from your own by reviting back the lectures. Okay. Okay then. Okay. Okay. And now we will come back to construction of minimal EAP. All the points are over. I think we are going very very slow so we will may by maintaining the speed I will describe all the things very very fastly 
because you can understand on your own. I will give you a little guidance, what type of questions, what type of questions we are going to frame in gate. So you will study on your own, okay? I will give the question, I will provide you the solutions, I will give you only the concepts. Understanding from the understanding point of view, you are on your own, okay? So we will take a 10-20 minute break. After that, we will be studying that topic, okay? Thank you.